going on, man? I'm good. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good. I've been good. Not too bad. Not too bad. Who am I here with today? Justin Waller. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Five in a year. Do you come from money? Fuck no. Hell no, man. No. Not at all. I grew up in South Louisiana. There was no money around. If you lost everything tomorrow, could you make it all back? Fucking right. You yeah. drop me butt naked in any city in America, I'll be hanging still in six weeks. How can somebody become a multimillionaire like yourself in today's world? Hard Knocks family, we just landed in Miami, Florida, and we're about to go meet up with and interview the legend Justin Waller. For those of you who don't know, Justin owns one of the largest construction companies across the United States, and he's quickly became one of the most renowned entrepreneurs in the entire business world. So we're gonna go meet up with Justin and ask him how he was able to grow such a massive company and his best advice to everyone watching trying to become millionaires in 2024. So with that being said, let's go see what Justin has to say. All right, you guys, so we're on the way now to meet up with Justin. We're pulling up shortly. I can't wait for the game that I know that he's about to deliver. This is gonna be a million dollars worth of game from Justin Waller. Pulling up here in a second. I can't wait for this one. What's going on, man? I'm good. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Good. To see you. Good. 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 I've been good. Not too bad. Good. Not too bad. Good. Who am I here with today? Justin Waller. What industry did you decide to pursue a career in? Yeah, so I started off in steel. I was 24 and started hanging steel locally in Louisiana. Now we have over 200 men, coast to coast, California to New York, Caribbean. We'll put steel up on the moon. How long have you been in construction for? I've been in construction 15 years next March. How important has that focus been? Becoming an expert as opposed to trying to diversify and jump from industry to industry. How important has it become for you becoming a master, one of the best in the world at one thing? Yeah, I think if I would give my young self credit for anything, it would be that I stayed in the same fight. A lot of people, they go into career, they start getting banged up a little bit, and and then they change directions. But what they don't understand is they're gonna take the beginner's licks of that new industry. So if I did anything right, even though the model might not have been the model that I think ultimately I'll end up in, I stayed in the same thing long enough to make substantial money to create freedom. If you can create freedom, then you can go start watering other plants. You see, we only get so much energy in life. And so you have the, you have this cup of water, let's call it your energy. If you pour it over too many plants, you'll never bear fruit on any of them. So the one thing I did right was stay in the same industry for a very, very long time. And now I can branch out, do other things, grow other businesses, look at other business models that might be better off in the long run. And do you come from money? Fuck no, hell no, man, no, no. not at all. I grew up in South Louisiana. There was no money around, I can tell you. So what was that turning point like for you? Like, how did you know you wanted to get really serious about becoming financially free and building that long-term generational wealth? What was the turning point like for you? Well, I think what happens is, is when you're in a situation, any situation, and, and this is not uncommon, you either become the situation that you're in the atmosphere or you decide that you want to do anything but be in that atmosphere. So for me, it was a pretty easy decision to make that I just wanted to find out what else was out there. I knew what I didn't want. And so it put me on this path to finding more and more consciousness. And as I come across those things in my growth and whatever I do, it, as far as the level of obtainment of my goals I hit, every time I get to the top of mountain, I'm constantly looking for the next one. And so I think there's two things. You run away or decide not to be what you were a part of. And then two, on that path, you find more consciousness, which kind of controls your direction you go. And once you identify those things and you identify that you can do those things and you get on that path, generally the happiness is on the climbing part. Just make sure you're looking for the next one to climb because you can get in trouble if you get to the top and you have nowhere to go. Hard Knocks family, we're about to get right back to the interview, but I have a very special announcement to make. We just launched the official community for the School of Hard Knocks, otherwise known as the School of Mentors. In this community, you will have access to hop on live calls with the multimillionaires we interview every single week. You'll be able to ask them questions about your career, your life, and your business. You'll also get access to exclusive unreleased content and master classes we've been filming with the world's most successful business owners. You do not want to miss out on this. So click the link in the description below to join the School of Mentors today. We can't wait to see you on the inside. And with that being said, let's get back to the interview. Did you have a lot of money to start this company or how did you get the money to start this business? No, man, we didn't have any money. So what I had to do is go out and get contracts and then go to the bank and show them I had contracts and try to get lines of credit. My first line of credit was for $15,000. I'll never forget it because I, my, my payrolls were like 2,500 a week because I had like two guys maybe and we were doing backyard buildings and so I always say about when it when it comes to dealing with the banks always go to the banks when you're solvent and you have a lot of money but in the case that you don't have a lot of money that's what an entrepreneur does he figures it out so I took my contracts that I had won and then I went to the bank and showed them that I had a contract and they gave me a little loan against it to get me through the first couple what is the secret to being able to leverage capital to leverage you know that good debt and turn that into wealth ultimately so if you look at the real estate you know I own over 400 
yours now. So you can underwrite a deal, understand the capital stack, whether you're raising somebody else's money to get the down payment, and then you're going to take it to the long-term debt with the bank. You just have to be able to understand the math of real estate. You know, what's the net operating income? What's the cap rate? What's my debt service going to be? Where are we at in the cycle on that property? So one thing I look at very hard right now when we're buying properties is like a lot of people don't want to buy properties right now because the interest rate is so high. And the only fear that I would have is that we get to the end of a five to a seven year arm and we're in a 1980 situation where you go from 7.5% or 8% to 16. But if you un if you understand the math of real estate, it's very simple. In fact, I'd even say it's third grade math. Then you understand the debt service and you understand where you are in the, in the overall cycle, like the long term, short term debt cycle, and you're paying attention to where rates will go. You should have enough time to make decisions that will allow you to reduce that risk. You can't get away from it completely, but you should massively be able to reduce the risk and set your properties up the way they need to be. You know they don't teach that in school, right? Oh, I've heard they don't teach that in school. <laughs> and, and, and why would they? Because the system is built for us to spit out employees and people that say yes and they pay taxes. They get married, they buy a three bedroom house and they die. And so, no, I don't think they're going to be teaching cap rates in school anytime soon. Right. Ben Franklin said that most people die at 22, but they're buried when they're 70. That's right. That's right. I heard that exact quote the other day. I think I heard 30 and 80, but yeah. nonetheless, yeah, there's a bunch of dead men walking every day. They don't yeah. live free. They can't say what they want. They want to say things. They feel things. And I think that's why people resonate with us so much is that we're getting to speak on their behalf because we're free enough to talk. Hard times right now, but we're going to turn it around. America's going to turn it around. Yeah. We're going to get the right guy in the White House. Absolutely. And then uh, when that happens, uh, we got to be able to clean things up a little bit. What has been the most amount of money that you've ever made in a single year? Ooh, single year? Five in a year. Five million dollars. Yeah. That's just for yourself. Yeah, just, no, that's take home. Take home. You know, that's complete take home, yeah. How yeah. about for the businesses? Yeah, businesses, I, we've got it up to 35. 35 million dollars. Yeah, yeah. How, how did you scale from seven to eight figures? Two things, it's systems and then it's competent people with intent. So if you take intention and then you take competency, their ability to do it, that means they want to and they can. If you can put those two things together and have them help you build the systems out, now I say help you very intentfully, because a lot of times if you make a plan and you hand it to somebody, they have no ownership, which means they're sitting in the boat with their arms crossed waiting for it to go wrong. But if they can help you build systems and be a part of building something, then they can have ownership in it. And when they can have ownership in it, they can get behind it. So intention, competency, and the ability to be a part and have autonomy in a company is going to take you a long way when it comes to dealing with employees and staff. And then one last thing, make sure you manage from a place of I should be paying you more money, not you should be making me richer. If I can jump somebody's ass because I should be writing them a bigger bonus check, then we're in a very, very healthy place. Because in that way, you've created an entrepreneur inside the business and you are grading them on performance based off of things that should align with something that is valuable to them as well. And that's making more money, having a better future for themselves and being able to see a vision that can fit inside yours. What's the best advice that you've ever got from a mentor? My favorite quote is that you can tell the size of a man by the size of his problems. If you can learn to embrace the things that are getting in your way, embrace the failures that are coming. Those are just small bricks that are gonna build your castle in life. Every time you fail, you must be grateful for it and see it as a part of the story that you're gonna tell people one day on a podcast, on a yacht, on a boat, on a plane, or in a restaurant of how you became the man that you are. And if you don't have any of those stories, nobody will be interested in your story at all and it'll mean nothing. So start to take pride in the negative things that happen to you because those are the things that are gonna make you the man that you're gonna become. For every new level, there's a new devil. Every king's got scars, cowboy. Every, every, that's crazy. If you lost everything tomorrow, could you make it all back? Fucking right. You yeah. drop me butt naked in any city in America, I'll be hanging steel in six weeks. So you go right back into steel. Yeah. And that's what's most important is if you stick to the same thing again and again and again and again, you get a superpower that many people don't understand. And it's that nobody can ever take it away from me. I know for a fact I could go anywhere, be hanging steel in six weeks. Yeah. How old are you now? 38. How old were you when you became a millionaire? 31, 32. Last message to the younger generation. They want to get Justin Waller rich in today's world. How can somebody become a multimillionaire like yourself in today's world? You can tell the size of a man by the size of his problems. Get up every day, every time you get hit in the face, have a relentless heart, and there's nothing this world can't stop you from doing. Thank you so much for your time, brother. I appreciate you. That was phenomenal. That's a wrap on today's video, guys. Justin Waller just went crazy, but I want you to like and subscribe for amazing content we've got coming very, very soon. And as I mentioned earlier, we just launched our official community for the School of Hard Knocks. So to get connected to and learn directly from the millionaires that we interview every single week, click the link down in the description below, and we'll see you on the inside. The School of Mentors, we can't wait to have you. We'll see you in the next video.